in regards to the recording, I know you're a fan of the RC Booster. I what am. type of role did it play with the new CD? With the new CD, not so much. Um, this, to me, it's, it's, it's a fantastic uh, live gigging problem solver, and I have a lot of ways I use it. Um, the, uh, this, this board is uh, typically, the, it's, a, it's a slightly different board, but uh, mm -hmm. the way I have it here, uh, it's, it, it's a use I've been, I, I, I found for it on the Steel of the End gig, which really works. Uh, there's, uh, typically when I play, uh, when I set up an amp and, uh, and a guitar, I, I like to use the amp overdrive, and um, most of my soloing I do on the treble pickup. Okay. But I find that you know the way I want to set the amp for the treble pickup, when I get it sounding right for that, if I switch to the rhythm pickup and want to use that same solo sound, mm -hmm. it's it's it doesn't sound right. It's got way too much bottom. It's got uh, it's not quite cutting enough, and um, and sometimes it's too it's just too loud. It's hitting mm -hmm. the amp too hard. Gotcha. So what I end up using the RC Boost for on the Steely Dan gig, for instance, you remember reeling in the years. You know mm -hmm. that, that's. Uh, that's a, you know, um, here's the, let's see, here's the, here's the clean sound. This is the overdriven, uh, like, sound for the treble pickup. And uh, this is a, uh, it's a clean sound. Now the rhythm pickup, if I switch to the rhythm pickup, this feels a little tubby, a little too big, a little too fat yep. and on the bottom. If I step on the RC, you can hear it's a, It's almost like a tube screamer, but it, but it, I like it better. It's uh, yeah, yeah. it uh, it takes out some bottom because I've got the base. Of these these controls are tuned in a way that uh, it just sounds very musical to me. So yeah, you're cutting you the can, bass quite I'm a bit. I'm cutting the bass quite a bit on this, <laughs> yeah. and I'm I'm raising I'm you know adding some treble. Oh, I'm actually I'm actually lowering the volume. I mean the the unity gain is somewhere around like twelve o'clock. It, maybe it's designed to be twelve o'clock, mm -hmm. but but so I'm pulling that back too, so it doesn't hit the amp quite so hard. But uh, you know, if, if I just went with a clean sound, it's this. You know, it's just not dirty enough. You, you gotcha. want more. You want gotcha. more drive, and it doesn't feel right under your hands. It's not right. And and this would be. This is a. Uh, it's a little too, too much. Yeah. And this. Uh, it, it just cuts better, like. A, especially on the low notes, it doesn't crap sure. out on the sure. bottom if you turn it off. It's okay, but it's like, you know, and that works for the treble pick because because the treble needs it needs some support on the bottom, you know. But so this really, it's it, like I said, it's a problem solver and it's a great one. So so you've got a dual use for it. You you've got one for kind of a, a tonality thing and another one for uh, compensation, um, uh, helping out that rhythm pickup where you need. Well, it. I, I mean, right now I only have the one on the board, and and mm -hmm. it's, I keep it set like this because it's uh, it's necessary for, uh, you know, for the, for that. For that sound, it, it's it's the way I like to get it the best. Mm -hmm. But you know, other uses I've I've had in the past for it, and will probably have again. One is uh, when I switch to uh, if I'm switching to a, a Fender guitar, it's got so much less output than some yeah. of these Gibsons yeah. that you know, like, if I didn't have something like the RC Boost to, to like kick up the volume a little bit, mm -hmm. I'd be back in like having to mess with the controls. Sure, the amp. Sure. I mean, you can't do that in a live situation. Absolutely. You gotta, it's, so again, it's a problem solver. You, you put that in the chain. When you switch to the fender, you step on it, and you know, and then when you. Well, I like back, how you, you describe that as a problem know. solver. It's great that way. I mean, and, and there's yeah. another way. I, I don't know if we can get back here and show it this, uh, but but the way I use it, um, I've got another one over there. I'm going to use to uh, to play along with a track from the record. Sure. And uh, the way I use it there, I've got the. Uh, for those you can't see, we have a tuner, an RC, and then a BB. The B, yeah, the BB thing is giving me the the, the drive for for that mm -hmm. for that setup, but the RC is before the BB, mm -hmm. and again, it's a problem solver. It's it's used to cut. Uh, see, when I'm singing on my own tunes, mm -hmm. um, often at the end of uh, a solo, I'll have to get back to the to the mic to sing right away, and I can't be like looking down here to like try to lower lower my volume to the sweet spot for mm -hmm. the rhythm guitar. It needs to go. Like bang right down to the sure. level that I need for the rhythm guitar, and I don't want to. I don't want to have to think about it. So I have the RC set up so that it goes right down. I mean, it, it cuts mm -hmm. and adjusts the tone a little bit so that it just feels like the right tone. But like I can just step on it, and right right away we're down to rhythm guitar volume, 
and, uh, and, then it does, and for the solo, I step on it, and uh, and I'm and and it's bypassed, and I go right to to the BB, and it's uh, but I keep the BB on, and just cut the input to it with with a cut from the RC. Sure, boost. sure. So it's funny that I mean I'm using it in a lot of these cases as a cut, not a not a boost, you know. And I love the way it's, it boosts great too, because it it just it it's. It just hits the amp harder, but it doesn't doesn't mess with the tone unless you want it to. But when, yeah. and I like like I said, I like where those controls are set. But I mean, to me, it's just like it's got all those practical uses, mm -hmm. and you know, and I because I do so many different kinds of gigs, I mean, I'm I'm always finding other ways to use it. it, it it's sure. always in the bag when I'm. That's why it's not on the board because I need it to, for all these other little practical things. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> so, it sounds like you've really thought outside of the box for a challenge that you've had. I mean, I think most people problem solver. Yeah, most people have. boost with it. I think you know. And, sure. You know, and a lot of my problem with it, when I use boost pedals that I like, my problem is I always end up keeping them on all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we hear that all the time with the RC. I should go back yeah. to the amp and just turn it up louder. If I want it louder, I should just keep it louder. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, absolutely. But but these are these are some. Uh, I mean. I've tried with some other pedals to do similar things, mm -hmm. and it, the problem with them is that they color the tone one way or the other. Yeah. And yeah. and this one is just great that way. It just it yeah. just seems to like oh okay it's gonna work. You know like, I, I breathe easier when I just when I you know, when I can use it that way. So. Well, it's an interesting uh, uh, pedal, and obviously you're using your style of music. We have a ton of Nashville guys using using it. Uh, we've got some uh, uh, heavier rock guys using it, so it's it's an all around. It's very course. versatile, and I mean, I don't. I, I tend not to have uh, to have the gain on at all. Yeah, but yeah. that but that helps too sometimes. I sure, mean, uh, sure. It, you know, it, and that's it's a good sounding one too. I just uh, because I get most of my amp uh, most of my overdrive from the amps, mm -hmm. I tend not to uh, need it. Uh, but yeah, it's. Well, John, that's I exactly that, yeah. you know what we wanted to hear and uh, give somebody else. Hey, hey, this is a, a good idea. This yeah, this will solve my problem. Yeah, well, you know, we we always have a lot of them, and it's usually like, you know, I mean, I mean every. I wish I could say like even on a Steely Dan gig when uh, we're you know they're taking care of business and they got yeah. great techs and yeah. great yeah. you know great venues. Every day is an audio struggle, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's, uh, there's always a problem, yeah. you know. You can't hear. This, every room's different, you know. Like, you know, you're, the setup sometimes a little, little, you're a little crowded, and you're hearing too much of somebody else, or you know. So, you, you know, you always got to be thinking on your feet, and uh, and and that's a that's a great tool. It helps, you know. It's helped in a lot of. A lot of situations sure. like that. So. Well, John, I really appreciate you taking the time to to meet with us today um, down in Soho, and guys. John Harrington, Steely Dan, Madden Peru, Dukes of September. He's going to be out on the road. Please go check him out. I'm Ben with Reality Web Video and Pro Sound Communications. Here's the problem solver. <laughs> Take Thanks, care. Ben. <laughs>